Hello, my name is Alex Carver. I'm a senior solutions engineer with Pure Storage covering our VMware integrations. With the release of our vSphere plugin 5.2.0, we have released a new feature called the Replication Manager, specifically for managing replication workflows for vVol's based VMs. Today, I want to go ahead and walk through some of the workflows with this new feature. From the main plugin screen, you will see with the arrays listed, there's a new option called Replication Manager. To use this new feature, you will need to select one of the arrays and then to click on Replication Manager. From this screen, you will be able to see the different replication groups associated with this array. Specifically, what the replication group name is, which vCenter VMs for this replication group are located at, what state this replication group is in, and what the peer array, whether the source or target array is, that's replicating to it, along with the virtual machines that are currently using this replication group. For example, the replication group listed here is located within vCenter1, is a source replication group, and is replicating over to the C0533 array, and I have two VMs currently using this replication group. From this screen, I can issue a sync once, which will sync the replication group on the target array, which makes it so it sends a current snapshot or point in time replica and replicates it from the source array to the target array. I can also go to the manage screen for this replication group. From this manage screen, I have a few different workflows I can use. One is to do a sync once, as we just covered. Another is I can do a test failover. I can also clean up the test failover. Then I can do a run failover as well as a reprotect. So these are very similar workflows as you would see within Site Recovery Manager. However, they only are used for vVol's based VMs and the plugin manages that way. Let's take a look at the sync once workflow. Here it goes ahead and it shows what the target array is, target vCenter, and the state there. And here we need to give it a replica name. This allows that point in time replica name to be associated with this replication job. And this will give us an actual progress of the status of this workflow. And once it is complete and acknowledged, it'll update within this screen. Now that the job is done, we can see that the synchronized storage worked correctly. Now we can go ahead and run a test failover. Here you can go ahead and choose the target array, which will have a vCenter. And these vCenters do have to be in linked mode in order to fail over between vCenters. Here I can choose the replica that I want to recover from. I can go ahead and do a test failover and specify the most recent replica that I just used. Here I need to choose the host that these VMs will be recovered to. And then to go ahead and choose the specific network and in particular, with a test network, you should make sure that the configurations are different and so you don't get any kind of conflict. So you need to do it to a test network. And here's a summary of what's going on. And this will kick off a test failover. This can take some time as it's going to go through the workflow of issuing the test failover, updating the files, and then registering those VMs and reconfiguring them. It won't power on the VMs automatically. And so you will need to go ahead and navigate to the recovery vCenter and to the host where those VMs have been recovered to, to then power them on. Now that the update virtual machine files is completed, the new VMX files on the recovery site are registered and the VMs are reconfigured. And now we can see those two VMs have actually been recovered over here. Now I can go ahead and once everything is complete, as it shows there, I can power on these VMs. And be able to run any operations I need to as it is in a test state. Confirm that they power on, that they're healthy, etc. We can see the VMs powered on. I could log in, check the integrity of them, etc. For the sake of the demo, we'll go ahead and skip over that. Now we can go ahead and do a cleanup. Now this will remove all test VMs in the site. 
Now, as part of a workflow, I wanna make sure these VMs have already been powered off, so I'm gonna do that first. And then once those VMs are powered off, I will go ahead and do the cleanup process. Granted, I could have left the VMs powered on as one of the steps is to power off the virtual machines. I went ahead and just powered them off manually. Now the VMs will be deleted and then a test failover stop will be issued. All right, now the test failover stop has been issued and the cleanup should have completed. And sure enough, those VMs are no longer there and we can see that the cleanup is completed. And here we went ahead and issued that sync replication group workflow, the sync once, as well as the test failover that we were able to issue as well. Now that we've ran through a sync replication workflow and a test failover workflow, let's go ahead and run through a failover and reprotect workflow. Now remember, on the Replication Manager main page, we can see the different replication groups and which target array they're replicating to it along with the VMs. For a failover workflow, we're going to go ahead and fail over this replication group, which will fail over to the other vCenter and the other array for these virtual machines. Now in this process, it will be powering off the virtual machines on the source site, as well as removing them once it's done. First, let's go ahead and run a sync replication group. And then once this completes, we'll go ahead and run an actual failover workflow. Here it says which vCenter this will be recovered to, should the vCenters be in linked mode. We'll pick the replica that we just replicated, and then choose the recovery host for these virtual machines. Now, because I am actually going to be failing over these ones, I wanna make sure I use the correct network in order to make sure that the applications stay online. Here, I also want to power on the virtual machines. Now, remember that all VMs in the replication group will be powered off on the source site. Now it'll go through and execute the failover, first by powering off those source virtual machines, executing the failover, updating the files, registering the VMs, reconfiguring them and powering them back on. And once all of that's done and they're powered on, it will clean up the source virtual machines. Virtual machines have been powered on. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. And you'll notice right there that the virtual machines on the source site were actually removed. And here we can go ahead and see the virtual machines as they were recovered. We can go ahead and launch the console, make sure they load in, log in, double check the application, and so forth if we needed to. We come back over here and we can see that sure enough that the replication group failover completed successfully. But now you'll notice that you can't actually run the reprotect anymore, and that's because this replication group is in a failed over state. You'll notice that right there. However, it's no longer on source array. It is now on the other array. So you can click on that link to the other array and it'll load this replication group onto that array. And then from this point, we can run a reprotect workflow. And during the reprotect, we will need to go ahead and choose which storage policy we then want to be reusing as well as which replication group we want to be using as well. Now we can use the original replication group that was automatically created when we failed over, or we can choose a different replication group. I generally rename these reverse replication groups after the fact, but right now I can go ahead and use this one. And now this is going to go ahead and run through the reprotect workflow. And this issues the API for the reverse replication group. 
Then it applies that storage policy and replication group to the virtual machines. And then we'll do a query compliance to make sure that they are okay. And we can go ahead and double check the policy and make sure that it's applied and sure enough that it is. And we can see those are applied correctly there. Now the VASA provider on the storage array will automatically do a sync replication group as part of the reverse replication group workflow. But in the case that I do want to do a sync once, I can also do that as well. And this will do a sync replication group. And there are the workflows for a standard failover for the replication group between two vCenters that are in linked mode and between two arrays where vCenter 1 only had access to array A and then vCenter 2 had access only to array B. One additional workflow that I want to cover is the case where you have a single vCenter that is connected to two different flash arrays and the vVol data stores for those arrays. You can still run through all of the Replication Manager workflows if you have a single vCenter connected to two different arrays. As the failover replication group, sync replication group, etc., workflows are issued against the replication groups themselves, not just the vCenters. So in the case of vCenter 1, I am actually connected to two different vVol data stores, one for the X70B05 array and one for the M20R2 C05 array. And the vCenter 2 is not connected to either of these vVol data stores. Conversely, if I didn't have enhanced link mode and only just had a single vCenter, I could still run this. So here we can see that the target array for this VM is the M20 array. So let's go ahead and manage this replication group. When we run through the sync replication group, notice that the target array is the M20, but the target vCenter is still vCenter1. It doesn't actually show up as vCenter2. So we're doing the sync replication group within the same vCenter, and then we'll do the failover within the same vCenter. Now the sync replication group's finished, let's go ahead and run an actual failover. We'll use that replica that we just created. Choose the compute resource to recover it to. And then we'll want to go ahead and use the same network. And we'll want to power on those VMs when it's done. So again, it'll power off the source VMs that are in the same vCenter. Then it'll execute the failover itself. Now keep in mind that the actual failover workflow will clean up the source virtual machines, meaning removing them. Now the VMs are being powered on. We can go ahead and take a look at that. Sure enough, we can see the VM05, the original source was powered off and it'll actually be cleaned up here pretty soon. Yep, there we saw it removed. And now this one's here. We can go ahead and click on it and see that it's okay. But we'll see that it's on an actual different VVOL data store than what the original one was. And here we can see the failover replication group completed. And then we can go ahead and run through the reprotect workflow as well. The reprotect is completed. We can go ahead and see that that policy has been applied as well. And now we were able to do that all within one vCenter and the two arrays. And that concludes our demo and our workflows here with the new replication manager. Now we did show using two vCenters that are in enhanced linked mode, being able to do test failovers and failovers between two arrays that are independently connected to two different vCenters. Then we also showed the workflow for doing a failover with one vCenter that is connected to two different arrays. Thank you so much for your time for watching.